So in my ever, uh, in my never-ending quest to try to find perfection and give you guys good quality footage, because I, you know, I do like making these videos. I have a lot of fun doing it, and I like teaching you guys. But uh, I know you guys demand higher quality because that's what you want. It's the world is that everything has to be perfect, and if it's not perfect, then it sucks, right? But anyway, uh, so I'm trying different things. I got this new adapter for my phone. It's like right up there and uh, it allows me to plug in HDMI USB and USB-C so I've got my monitor over he 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 ah monitor is right there it's right there my monitor is over here and then I've got this blue microphone so I can see what I'm doing and hopefully this with this blue microphone you guys can hear me better but anyway enough friggin' ranting so these things are really damn handy. This is not technically a new product because tons of different companies have already come out with stuff like this. But um, it's handy as hell because you can actually like run 24 volts PoE in here and then you could potentially run three 24 volt PoE devices like three cameras. Yeah, this is a Ubiquiti product. And it's, uh, I'm pretty sure this is designed for the uh, G3 dome cams and, or the G3 cams, sorry, not just the domes, the golf ball cams. But uh, It'll pretty much work with anything that's 24 volts. But um, it also has grounding. Like really nice grounding, actually. So I'm really happy about that, but yeah, I want to kind of take it to bits. This, I mean, I love this damn thing. Uh, I'm starting to use these actually in a lot of places, and it is gigabits, so it's candy as hell. So yeah. There's your switch. But now... I noticed something else. See, this one here actually lives in my truck. I've actually got a bracket that I'm going to stick on it. That's a DIN rail mount that will allow me to um, essentially mount this in my truck on my DIN rail where I put all my tools and stuff. But I noticed something though. This is where it gets interesting, actually. Right here, there's a spot that says Con 2. Now, I'm curious about that because if you look here, there's a spot for a cap and a spot for a full bridge rectifier, as my hero, uh, <laughs> Medi Sagar of uh, Electro Boom would say. Full bridge rectifier! So, seeing that it's got a spot for a full bridge rectifier and two fuses on here, this would tell me that it'll accept 24 volts um, input right off of that. So with that being said, I want to try that. So give me two seconds here. Now let's see. We're going to have to do a couple of little tests here. So I'm also going to not do exactly 24 volts just in case I screw something up. So we got our power leads here. And uh, let's get my multimeter and figure out which one's negative because your negative is usually reference to ground on most things. There we go. There we go, so. Oh, it's already labeled, there's negative right there. Okay, so if I, yes, the negative is reference to ground. Cool. All right, so if that's the case, let's just try putting 24 volts on this thing and see what happens. Actually, you know what? Probably a smarter idea for me to do would be to use a set of alligator clips or jumper wires. I think I'm gonna set of jumper wires. Ah, here's a set right here. This is fun with science and modifications. By the way, folks, I doubt that this is any longer in warranty, so just throw the friggin' warranty right out the window because it is gone now. And I'm just gonna grab my soldering iron. My handy dandy solder. What the hell's going on? Oh, it's wrapped around my microphone. See, I'm adjusting, right? Okay, so let's just solder this on right here. Just gonna, there we go. Trigger warning. If it triggers you that the way I saw it are, then good. I've actually been told that I Frankenstein stuff. That, that's amazing to hear. Thank you for telling me that I Frankenstein stuff, people. Um, I'm just trying to teach people stuff. So, again, the reason why I'm attempting to do this right now is because if this is a possibility, then when I stick this in my truck, I don't need to use the port one 
as a input. I can power this thing directly with a barrel connector, which I will have to dig out and install. So let's try this. So we're just going to solder this guy on here. So let's get that nice and hot. This is sloppy, but this is just for a test anyway. Oh, get on there. I don't like that. They're too close. Okay, this is definitely falling off again. Ah, it's a good thing my, uh, I might have to actually use smaller wires. Let's, um, if I have to, I'll do a jump cut, because I know this is really boring. So let's, uh, let me go over here and my random wire pile. I do know I've got some random wires around here that I, oh, wait a second. That's USB. That one's occupied. Oh. This, this might work. It's a little 12 volt experiment that I made a while ago. So this is just the testing process. This is uh, what we do when we're trying to figure out if something's actually going to work. So let me just see here. Let's put some flux on here. Flux it, flux it good. I want a I'm going to use my shitty solder. This is my Radio Shack solder. Mm, here we go. Let's see what we got here. There we go. And then... Let's cut this in here. Okay, so since we only need tiny little bits of this wire... I really hope this works, because if this works, it's going to be amazing. I want to have the barrel connector on here, put it on the DIN rail in my truck, and then when I need to use my Ubiquiti radios or any other 24-volt radios, I can simply plug it in and run it off the bus in my truck. That's kind of what I'm going for here. Okay. Now, rather than complicate things anymore, let's see if the LED comes on. So... Don't eat these now. I'm gonna put the honey pot aside. The honey pot of doom. Okay. And let's see here. Let's put positive on here. Now, the reason why they put a full bridge rectifier on here is because then you can't screw up the polarity, but. Look at that. Apparently it works. Cool. All right, so we know that this will work now. Um, so now the next step is is to install the full bridge rectifier. I love that battle cry. I'm not I'm not even anybody on YouTube yet. I mean, nobody even really knows about me except for you guys in the Wisp community. But uh, if you guys do enjoy watching YouTube and you do enjoy uh, tech channels, there's tons of awesome tech YouTubers out here. Um, like I mentioned, uh, Electroboom is one of my favorites. Um, and he's also a Canadian as well, like me. But then there's also um, EV Blog, there's Big Clive, there's there's tons of people out there, and they're all just great. Uh, I found this Simone girl, she's actually really cool. So here's the full bridge white rectifier they're gonna use, but I just need to verify the uh, markings on it. Uh, which side's positive, which one's negative, uh, which side's AC, because the trick here is just that the input jack is gonna connect to the AC side of the full bridge rectifier and uh, what that will do is it means it's polarity independent so you can actually take this thing and you can reverse polarity it and it actually not damage it that's the beautiful thing about these little guys they're very useful for many things I mean like converting um, AC to DC is the most common but um, depolaritizing something is another so let me just see what we got yep positive negative it looks like this actually may fit perfectly which, look at that. I actually picked the right one. Now, I did scavenge that um, full bridge rectifier off of another part, but it was another radio. So, yeah, I do scavenge stuff sometimes. Now, it's, the comment that I received actually recently was, oh, you Frankenstein things together. And it's like, well, not really. And it really does depend. Like, when I'm doing repairs on equipment, um, typically what I will do is I will order brand new stuff for the most part. So if um, 
you send me something and you're paying me to repair it, or my team, I should say, because Thomas is my uh, repair technician and he is amazing. Um, we will just order brand new parts, uh, especially for uh, interface chips or um, certain diodes and whatnot. We'll use brand new chips on your equipment so that they get you know full life out of them, right? But in some cases, like if we need an Ethernet port that's unique, or we need a specific TVS diode or MOV or a coil or, you know, basically a component that doesn't wear out over age and will not die unless you blow it up with lightning, sometimes we'll recycle those on parts. It's not the end of the world and it saves the customer money. So if you're a small ISP, you don't have a ton of money and you send me something saying, Sarah, you know, I've got, I need to save some money on this. Can you help me? And I'll say, yeah, sure. Let me see what I've got. Is it okay if I use used parts? You say, okay, then I will use some used parts. But uh, I'm not a scammer, so I'm just trying to help you guys. Okay, so this is all prepped. I'm going to throw a little bit of extra solder on here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on with a heat gun. So let's just see here, a little bit extra solder. Yeah, we got a couple of nice blobs. Okay, that being said, let's get the heat gun going. Good, I got the small tip on it. So turn this guy on. Alright, I'm going to need to get a set of tweezers out of here somewhere. There we go. Now let's make sure we get this around the right way. I don't know if I'm going to put the cap on there because I don't really think that we're going to need one. Alright, so let's see here. So, ah, damn it. Okay, so which side's... Okay, so i got to move it around because that side's clearly positive. It is labeled on top, which is kind of handy. And then afterwards, I'll just double check it, but that should just settle on there nicely. I am not going to claim to be an expert at micro-soldering. I mean, I do stuff. Don't get me wrong. That looks perfect. Okay, so we'll let that cool down for a second. And I'm just going to get a little bit of ISO. Yeah, there we go. Put my meter aside. That's my bench meter, my favorite bench meter. I just ordered a fluke, so let's see how the fluke turns out. There's a little bit of ISO in here. Yeah, I started buying this thing, this ISO bulk, by the way. Oh, it's pretty awesome. Okay, here's my paintbrush. This is my little board cleaning brush. I'll get a little bit of air for that. There you go. As my cats run and fleeing from the room. Looks pretty good. Okay, so this is the technically AC side here. This is the DC side right here. So now, I'll see if I take this guy here and I, doesn't matter what side's positive now. Isn't that cool? Because what the full bridge rectifier does is what are you put in one side? It's going to make sure that in this case, I'll put this down for a second. This pin is designated positive. This one's designated negative, And then this is whatever in. Uh, what it is, is there's actually a couple of diodes with the positive flowing this way and the negative flowing that way. And the diodes are connected to both pins. So these two pins here go through a diode that comes out positive over here. These two pins are connected to a diode that comes out negative over here. Simple as that. So that's all you got to do there. So that's actually a really cool idea, Ubiquity. I'm glad that you guys did that. So now for the next step here, uh, we need a barrel jack. And I think I've got one over here. 
This little barrel jack will probably do the job just nicely. Now the question is though, once I install this barrel jack, we're going to have it hanging out inside of here. I might actually just poke it through the side here because I've got plenty of room here if you look. You can see that uh, there's a ton of room down here. I'll try this on the zoom camera. Tons of room right there. So we'll just... Uh, uh, let me see here. I need drill bits. Where are my drill bits? Drill bits are right here, I think. Um, let's, uh, yeah. Okay, we've got... I should put a grommet on here if I had any sense at all, but... I don't have any. Not here. And for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really matter. Because this is for me. This isn't for a customer. This is just... Uh, just for me. Okay, I like that. That, that that's going to be our size right here. And I wonder if this will fit in my Dremel. Probably not. But, um, let's see here. I think this one will fit in my Dremel. So I'll use this one as a pilot. There we go. There we go. Just have to make sure that it's straight so I don't bust my bit. There we go. Let's get the uh, Dremel going. Which is not plugged in. Uh, where the hell is it plugged? Where's it? Well, I seem to have disturbed the uh, LEDs on the bench. There we go. Let's just uh, go through here. Oh, it's stainless. I really should have noticed that. Well, that's gonna suck. Yeah, I'm not breaking about this. Nah, I don't have stainless bits. I'm not a mechanical technician. I do electronics. Um, not the end of the world. Let's see where I can squeeze it out then. Besides, this is just a dirt mod. This isn't like I'm doing something like critical for business or whatever. I'm, I can push it through like this, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend this a little bit then. That I can do. Or, let's see if we can actually cut that. I don't... Maybe we can cut that crap with the... Uh, with a diamond cutoff wheel. I don't know. Let's try it. Neat. These new quick bit things, I don't know, they're kind of weird. Still getting used to them. Alright, let's try that. Oh, I got it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Ha! <laughs> Diamonds really are a girl's best friend. Okay, with that being done now, uh, this goes back in here like so. So I'm just going to solder these guys on here. Close that. 
Oh, by the way, one of my uh, fellow hackers, I guess, um, has actually figured out that, uh, well, maybe not figured out, but apparently these little pins here are serial interface, so you can actually create like a little Bluetooth adapter to go into these uh, calipers that allows you to uh, um, record or put export, that's what I'm looking for, uh, export your readings uh, directly to your computer. That's really, really handy. Okay, here we go. So we got these guys. I'm just going to tin them. We you have an organizing. I got drawers back here now. It's pretty cool. Do, 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 do. A little bit of solder. I like solder. Got to clean this tip. I want to get an electronic clip. Uh, tip cleaner. Clip cleaner. Tip cleaner. That's right. Filthy-minded individuals. That'd be pretty cool. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to prep this. A little bit of flux on here. There we go. So now I'm just going to rest the jackets against here, and then. Cleaner. There we go. A little bit more. You want to make it like a little volcano. There we go. Okay, so that's looking good. Yeah, it came through. It's not bad. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this little scrub. Get rid of all the excess crap. There we go. She's good to go. All right, let me get the. Uh, I'm gonna get a test tail. Plug this in. Let's let's plug it in now. Would you look at that? And I can switch the polarity on it and not blow it up. That's really handy, especially if you've got an apprentice working with you who doesn't know much about DC and says, "Hey, how to hook this up?" And you've got an electronics lab in the mounted in the back of your truck, and they end up hooking things up and blowing everything, you know. And then you get upset, and then you feel bad and guilty, and you take them out for lunch because you felt bad for yelling at them. Not that that ever happened or anything. All right, screws are back in. Um, I am going to recommend zip tying this somehow. I think I might have a teeny tiny zip tie that can do the job. Zip ties. I'll bring this over here. Okay, so because this is going to be flush against the side of the chassis, that might be a minor issue. There we go. Okay. Now these tiny little zip ties, if you tweak them too much, they will break. So, just enough, cut it off. Let's see if this thing will go back together now. I'm getting kind of excited here. Seems to work. Oh, one key thing, by the way. This is also a locking mechanism, this right here. So when you push this thing back in. There we go. And then when you put your uh, bolt through there, it'll lock it in place. So now that the mod is complete, you guys uh, see we now have a nano switch. Oh, I knew there was going to be a catch. But this doesn't matter. I'm not going to use this in my truck, nor did I build this for any other application than my truck. Clearly, if you're going to use this out in the field like this for whatever reason, you're going to have to struggle a little bit to get the cable in there. 
But if you're using this in the field, you're gonna be connecting this back to a PoE switch or a PoE injector of some kind anyway, so you don't have to worry. This is gonna be mounted on a DIN rail on my truck. Now, I guess the last little part of this little puzzle is I need to put my uh, DIN bracket on there. So I think I decided last time that my DIN bracket was gonna go on here like this. So let's see here. So I gotta mark this. How did I do this last time? I did it like that. No, I didn't. That's right. I had to balance it because of the screws. So I gotta bring it across like this. Mark it. I gotta mark. Make sure that I don't screw this up. I'm not rushing, but I don't want to lose your attention because I know that I myself have a very short attention span. I do. ADD, ADD, ADHD. I have ADHD. It's a horrible condition that many of us have. I've been told now not to feel as bad though because apparently tons of brilliant individuals, not saying that I'm brilliant, but whatever, um, have horrible, crippling mental illness. And ADHD is apparently one of them, so whatever. Or ADHD, ADHD, I don't fucking know. Alright, let's level it. I don't use it enough. Actually, how many times have I actually used my Dremel in my videos, to be honest? I mean, I don't really do it. There we go. Cut this up here. This I am a stickler OCD about making everything look nice. miss these two. Not a big deal because we also have a hand file. Which I should have done anyway. Just to finish it off. Alright, so now we just need to anchor it. Now, how are we going to do that, you might ask? I might be asking myself the same thing. Now, I screwed it in last time, so I'm just going to do that again. I'm just going to put a couple of pilot holes in here. Um, I want to make sure it's level. There we go. So, I have some screws. Uh, where did I put them? Some little screws for this bad boy. If I can find them. Uh, one second. You know what? I'm not going to use the original screws. Yeah, I'm just going to pop this through like so. Or. I can actually slip this down a little bit. Just thinking out loud. You know what? No, I can make this work. So I need it to sit just like this. We're going to take a smaller drill bit. 
And I actually, because I'm not a complete idiot, um, by the way, I really hope that the new microphone sounds better. What did I do with those screws now? Oh, don't even tell me that I misplaced the damn things. Brand new screws. Specifically, oh, that's right, I put them in a drawer. Uh, let's see here. I'm in a drawer. Um, which drawer? How can I lose things so easily in this fucking place? Well, this is definitely going to turn into a jump cut now, because uh, I can't find my screws. Oh, we can go back to plan A. There we go. Plan A was just to use these little guys. Plan B was that I actually picked up the right uh, threading for these, so that you can actually like, bolt these right through the chassis, but last time I found you didn't really need that, so... There we go. That's the right one right there. This is just my bench stuff. So we need a screwdriver. And this one goes in here too. There we go. So yeah, my original plan was just to do this. Thankfully I found the little screws. They're just little tiny wood screws. I mean, who cares? As long as it works, it's perfectly fine. Here we go. Especially when it's just for your lab. Or in my case, my mobile lab. Okay, so let's just see here. This will make me insane if it's not perfectly straight. Okay, so right about uh, uh, 18 mil. 18 mil, about 18 mil. It looks off for some reason. Like right there, it looks perfect. So, there we go. So now. This thing's gonna move onto the DIN rail in my truck, like so, where it shall live forever. This is gonna go into my 24 volt, uh, 12 volt to 24 volt DC to DC boost converter, which will then allow me to power uh, my onboard radios from these ports and then connect this one into my little router. Uh, I do have a hex, uh, or sorry, a power box pro in my truck as well, but this is when I don't need to use the router. This is just a simple power switch. So there we go. I just modded that switch to work in my truck by adding a DIN rail, a full bridge rectifier, and a awesome little tail to connect shit to. So there, that's uh, another video in the bank. And I think for my next video, I'm going to show you guys some fiber optic stuff. So this was just a not nothing video. Just remember that this is not some this is how you fix this and how you do that. Now, this is literally just a uh, fun video for people who like to mod things. And I know there's a lot of Ubiquity fans out there, and I do like Ubiquity because you can do all sorts of cool stuff with their products, especially Microtech. Microtech is actually really good for modifying and doing things with. Um, 
they actually sell their boards in that way. So this is probably not going to go back onto my truck. It's literally going to be like that. So anyway, enjoy. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave uh, any suggestions or advice in the comments below. Uh, how do you do below? Below. Leave comments and suggestions below. Click the bell if you want to see notifications and I don't know, whatever other YouTubers say. Have a good day. Bye, guys.